Han är föddes för 76 år sedan i Harlem, New York. Och hans mamma kom från eh, Jamaica. Och kanske var det tonerna från dessa öar i solen som gav honom hans speciella varumärke som underhållare. Men med åren så blev de här sångerna, fick de en annan betydelse också. Han såg ju hur eh, orättvist och fattigdom, hunger, våld drabbade en hel eh, befolkning. Och hans sånger blev plötsligt också ett, ett sätt att kämpa mot den fruktansvärda rasismen i USA på den tiden. Hans namn, Mr. Harry Belafonte. Mr. Belafonte, that was a long preach in Swedish. But I had to introduce you in my way. Welcome back to Stockholm. Thank you very much. Do you remember a special night in the Opera House, full from roof to ceiling? The Prime Minister, whatever they were. 37 years ago, a, a borderless night at the Opera House. Do you remember that? I remember it very, very clearly. It was a very historic moment. And beyond the, the great delight that the audiences of the Scandinavian countries uh, experienced, it meant a great deal for not only Dr. Martin Luther King, but for millions of people in the United States of America who were caught in a desperate struggle for their civil and for their human rights. Coming to Sweden was a very, very courageous thing for Dr. King to have done when he suggested that uh, we look to our friends outside of America for moral as well as financial support for the cause that we were struggling with. Many people in America thought that such an idea was ill-advised that we were taking a very personal domestic issue and we were like putting our laundry in public, so to speak. And Dr. King felt that, that such an assessment of anything as difficult and as cruel as we were experiencing under the hands of racism and the, we did not have the right to vote, our children did not have the right to go to schools of their choice, unemployment was very great, people could not live or go freely to the places of their choice as Americans. And we needed to have the support of our peoples from other cultures and other parts of the world. And coming to Sweden was very pivotal to that concept. In that journey, we came to two places. First was in Paris, where we were helped by a large group of French and other European artists who helped present Dr. King for the first time to the French society. But perhaps the most impressive of both was the one that we did here in Sweden. Not only did the King of Sweden accept most graciously and passionately to be the patron of the event, but the Prime Minister of Sweden was the chairman. The Bank of Sweden gladly accepted that it would become the repository and the post office of Sweden became our mailing address. And to have all those artists from everywhere in the Scandinavian country to come together in order to say not only do we embrace you and the humanity that you represent, but we too are part of the very same struggle. Your struggle is the struggle of the Swedish people. And we feel very much a part of that. It's marvelous, marvelous. Uh, you met, of course, afterwards, and you laughed a lot to Hasse and Tage, who were the presenters. <laughs> I heard that you were very, very keen on them both. Yeah. Now, when you met Martin Luther King for the first time, how do you feel? How, how was he? How, uh, your impressions, the first. When I first met him, he had. We had known about him because the, the problems had just begun to evidence themselves in a place in America called Montgomery, Alabama. It was perhaps one of the most racist places in America. 
As a matter of fact, it was a place most unlikely for anything to start because there were no, there were no tools with which to work with in that society. It was so harsh and so oppressive. But Dr. King started there. And we heard, we heard of this man uh, making an attempt to make a change in the way America did business with its black citizens. And he said, when he called me, that I'm coming to New York to speak to the ministry, to speak to the ecumenical community of the North. And in a church, I will be talking to many of the ministers from the Jewish faith, from the Islam, Islamic faith, from the Christian faith, from the many denominations. And I hoped to have the opportunity to meet with you at that time. And I told him that we could meet. We met in the basement of the church after he gave his talk to the ministers. And we were supposed to have met for what was supposed to have been about 20 minutes. And the meeting took five hours. And at the end of that meeting, I had made my commitment that he was the one that I would bring all the resources I could possibly uh, find available, that I'd work with him until the very end of the struggle, and that I would never, ever leave him. You are a world-famous entertainer, left in a way the beautiful life in Beverly Hills or whatever you stay, to work with him, partly at least. You work with him quite often. It was not a difficult decision to make. There was no other conclusion that I could have reached. This was the struggle on a human level that was far greater than anything I'd ever witnessed, except perhaps with the great struggle in the Second World War, which had not been too long before. We remembered the great pain and the great anguish that people went through in the great struggle against fascism and, the great, and against Hitler. And here we were at a new level, at a new struggle, fighting against the same things in many ways, the issue of race, the issue of white supremacy, the issue of oppression. People were being arrested unfairly. Justice was not available to everyone. And the issues were very similar. Certainly they were not quite as large as the experience of the Second World War, but they were headed in the same direction. And I have believed then as I believed when I was in the Second World War, because I served in the United States Navy during that war as a uh, munitions loader. And we knew that that war was to end all race issues. And when those of us who fought that war successfully went back to our own countries and found that the issue of race was still as brutal and as uh, intense as it was before and during the war, well, we just on. knew that we had to go uh -huh. on. And here with Dr. King was the threshold of that movement. So that to meet him in that church and to see in him the remarkable uh, intellect, his humanity, the courage that he expressed was really quite stunning. Yeah. And I knew then that I would willingly join him in the crusade. Of course, we had, we had the foggiest idea that it would become as big as it did yeah. and that it would engulf so much. Yeah. But still, um, I mean, you must realize there were a lot of progress. I mean, there were a lot of success, a lot of victories. We will talk a little bit about the victories and also a little bit about how will the future be? Because unfortunately, there are still problems. But let us now see when he went to Sweden, when he went there to have his speech, when you were there singing and uh, to have it all over again. Då är det tid att se det här programmet. Mina damer och herrar, Minnernas Television den här gången bjuder på en gränslös kväll på operan 1966. Med i centrum Mr. Harry Belafonte.